continuing on with the farm radio CTC 24 chassis the previous video was on the sound in this video I cover a, a problem with the color and uh, video IF alignment and I'm also stuck and I'm still haven't figured it out working on um, a twerking in the horizontal which you'll see and I use the BNK 1077 basically to isolate it down to being in the horizontal oscillator and then it appears that it's in the power supply because so I'm getting this jumping in the power supply but that turned out not to be the case because I hooked my scope up to another working a chassis and I still have the jumping so I think it's some kind of false information from some kind of ground loop or the the scope not liking 450 volts DC applied to the input or something so this is still a project in um, in the works um, I did find a couple bad capacitors uh, one of these actually they're kind of lossy and I haven't tried it since so I basically went to the parts house and I bought every part for the horizontal oscillator and deflection circuit so take what you could get out of this video it's not a very good video the IF alignment is fairly interesting how that shapes up so uh, you know have fun Okay, back on to Farm Radio's CTC24A. And uh, last time we played with the sound. And um, yeah, I've kind of been out of it for a while. Sorry, this is taking so long. I've just been busy with so much other stuff. Water pipe failures and visitors from New Zealand and other projects that were mandatory um, so I stuck this chassis into my CTC 28 and the yoke plug matches but the convergence plug doesn't which is cool you can run this without convergence but I'm gonna have to drop the cathode of the vertical output tube through a 100 ohm resistor to ground because that's what the convergence assembly does something like that anyway I got it stuck in my CTC 28 here and I don't hear it doing anything at all so what's going on here I don't hear high voltage or anything and there's high voltage there I don't have anything on the screen here. I, 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 I don't agree with that. Well, I'm going to say the yoke is not configured the same. Huh. So what do I do with this? Well, you know what would actually help is if I plug the damn yoke into the right socket and the convergence into the right socket. I don't know where my brain is right now. It's not on TVs, that's for sure. So now we got like a dim red raster, so I'm going to have to, of course, my CR, boy, this is really kind of weak. Well, there's a definite lack of green here. Of course, my, my setup on my, why is green so weak? Does this have a bias or what does this vertical height? Where's the keen bias? Right here. Boy, there's still a lack of green drive there. This CRT is strong, and that's the bias all the way up and the green all the way up. We might have a... Huh. Do 
annoying up there. I don't know. It looks like fun, though. No, girls are gross. Yeah. But they're kind of pretty to look at. Yeah. And their hair's off, too. How about it, Bob? You're pretty good explorer. We should do this more often. <clears throat> so what grade are you going to be in next year? I'm going to be in fifth grade, but I don't know if I'm coming back. Oh, what do you mean? I might be moving. I don't know if I'm going to be living with my mom or my dad. Huh. There was a little bit where I didn't have a dad, but now I have a dad. He's pretty awesome. Yeah? Oh, yeah. He lets me ride piggyback all we should be on that rock, not Clarence! What, so you can make out with Amy? No! I just want to be on a rock! Someone's got a crush. Uh, go get some pine cones! We're okay, I am using... Okay. I am using the, um... <laughs> IF output out of the, the BT it? modulator. Oh, hey, which oh, should oh, look rock. perfect. Uh, this isn't your rock. We found um, you can't just I'm, own. I'm going directly into the tuner input from the BT modulator, and that to me looks like the fine tuning. Let me pause this. So. The next thing I want to do is I want to, that looks like the fine tuning is way off. And with the BT modulator fed into the IF input, it should, the fine tuning should be right on because that, that is like a perfectly tuned tuner. And I've done this with many sets and that should, that should produce a perfect color picture with good sound and that looks like the fine tuning is way off to me um, which would indicate the IF is way out of alignment so uh, let me go into the tuner and see if I can f it, go through the tuner and see if I can if I can fine tune this and get this to look good with the tuner fine tuning then the IF is definitely way off so I hook the, the tuner input up and I get FM radio stations. That's an FM radio station. Okay, I just realized it's on channel six. No wonder why I'm getting a bunch, about four FM radios. Okay, here's the picture I get going through the tuner when I put it on channel four. So the IF is way out of alignment. It's way off because the BT modulator output is like a perfectly tuned tuner so let's see if I can get this any better see so yeah, how the the wall the and you're looking at it in a mirror but the uh, the sound is way out of whack with the color and everything that's the volume all the way up That looks like tint. That's color level.
sound is very weak. That's the sound wide open. We always end up watching Tom and Jerry in these RCA color TV repair uh, videos, so this one's no different. Go back to the BT modulator IFN and look at it again. You notice the sound is much stronger, but IF is whacked. All right, next video is an IF alignment. Okay, we're gonna. Take a look at the alignment and um, the FM twer uh, FM the horizontal twerking was um, was there before it left. So uh, color is back. Last night I had this on for about three hours. After about an hour and a half, the color took a dump. So. I got a couple different sources of information here. This is the RCA factory color service manual on the 24. Of course we have the SAMs and we have the RCA factory alignment. Now this is much more detailed and much more complicated they want you to make your own pads, they want several bias points, they want all kinds of stuff. The SAMS is much easier. The SAMS goes better with the B&K 415. So I'm going to go with the SAMS and I'm going to use this as a reference for my tie points for uh, like bias and um, biasing and connection. Now this has something interesting. Look at this, somebody's been in here before. So anyway there's an interesting well they call that A9. This thing has a bandwidth Is it not bright enough for you, or what's the problem? Anyway, this has a capacitor here. Oh, you know what? This is still in manual focus from that EOL. Okay, here we go. So this has an interesting thing, which is a capacitor. 
in the front end that's called a bandwidth adjustment which is A9 but then we also got R20 so let's have a look at this so they're calling the capacitor A9 okay here's what uh, we're looking at here's the markers that are turned on now this is flipped so the sound bump is on the right side here um, this is about as whacked out as I would expect but I'm going to hesitate turning anything right at the moment I want to play around see if I got everything hooked up right adjusting the voltage on the AGC and Sam's just says adjust it so it's not overloading so you know we should have something that looks like that not like that right now the only markers I have on are the two outer edges of the main band pass and that's this one and that one ignore this over here so if I turn this other one on 39 point these two this should be the sound bump which I don't even I don't even know where that is on here alright so these are the three I got on now remember this is flipped up on top so I got the two on the sound bump and then that one so these two would be the sound bump and then that one okay well I've been playing with this and I've gone over everything and I've verified that I'm hooked up to all the right places and the one thing I forgot to do is to shut the horizontal I mean the oscillator off in the tuner so what I did is I balanced it in between three and four um, which doesn't really seem to make a difference but nothing really seems to make a difference which in a way is a good sign um, there's a lot missing here um, let me turn on uh, these two right here which is 45 and 6 7 so you can see I'll turn all the other ones off so you can see the only two I got on right now are the top and there's there's a whole chunk missing over here like if I turn on um, 7.25 so if I turn on these two I'm sorry this this should be the downward slope to there so there's a whole it's like there's a whole chunk of the band pass missing and um, that that would explain the picture quality and the lack of sound and all that other stuff so before I, I start tweaking on this too much, I want to set the traps. And you set the traps by using modulated markers on here. So I'll show you how we do this. Okay, so we start off with 41.25 and we adjust A1 for minimum. So A1 is the top here. A1, A5, A4. What does this thing got? Three slugs in it? Okay, so we're on modulated markers here. And we have 41.25 turned on. And if you're going to do an alignment with this, read the friggin manual that comes with the 415 because you can't follow the SAMs 
without reading the manual for this because this has options on it that cover things in the SAMs like the SAMs tells you to do this with a signal generator well you don't need to do it with a signal generator it's all built into this use modulated markers so what we're gonna do is we're gonna minimize oh come on we're gonna minimize that so we wanna adjust Now if these are way off, that's a good indication that, that the IF is off. If okay. Okay, that was kind of way off and the camera won't focus. Now the next one is 41.25 and we want to adjust A2 for minimum. So what's A2? A2 is the top on that one there. So it's the top on this one here. I cranked it up. Okay, now the next one is 45.25 and we adjust A3, which is that one right there, and R20, which has got to be that resistor right there. Now what's interesting, maybe it doesn't like the flicker right here. Why will it not focus on this? Anyway, um, this won't do it. Okay, I've gone back to manual focus. Now, so some parts are going to be blurry. So the rest of what it wants me to do is adjust them back and forth to try and correct this. Now remember we're going for um, not necessarily a peak, but we're going for bandwidth and marker positioning. So... Turn this one here, which is the bottom of the trap. Oh. Boy. What happened there? Jeez. Wow. To turning that one does bring it all the way in or what? Oh, and the, did the gain wake up too? Okay, this looks pretty good. Um, I could continue tweaking on it all day, but I'm just gonna leave it like that because I got complete coverage now of of uh, the band pass, and I don't want to screw with it anymore. College uh, ran professionally for a while, and uh, yeah. Okay, we kind of know we got it right, right because and, uh, I'm feeding in the IF from the modulator, and it looks pretty good. In under four minutes. So um, I don't think the beer has. Yeah, the IF is good. The sound is still not very loud. I don't think the The color issue is something on the a crack solder somewhere. Does it really impact you by the time you crash the finish line? Because if I push on. Even a little tipsy. It's it's yeah, definitely not drunk. The hardest part is just the carbonation. If I push on this part right here, the color goes in and out. So it's a crack solder or a bad tu tube socket. Okay, we'll start off taking a look at the uh, color issue, and I'm pretty sure I found it. Um, 
We're going to deal with the focus issue thing here again. See that one right there? Yeah. yeah, that one right there. So start off with that, and then I'm going to replace this double diode right here. Uh, let's see if we could get rid of the torquey horizontal. Okay, here's what we're going to use in there. These these work very, very well. And it'll never go bad. This, this is a... Um, the original is a selenium. And this is a shot key. Well, I'll tell you what the um, buzzing, this would be a candidate to just bypass the audio and go directly in. Let me see if I can find my... Millions of people have lost weight on Nutrisystem, and now you can too. Well, I think we should... Directly onto the... Certainly don't have the time since almost everyone. There is the howling wolf. We'll do a nice little close up on these. Then any thieves don't discriminate. Young, old. Montel Williams. Caddy Shack. We can deal with that. Okay, we'll just put it on this. Oh man, the twerking is so... Maybe I do see it bouncing around. Boy, that is so friggin' minute.
I'm really not seeing it here. This is the horizontal output tube drive. So what happens if I just kill a signal? No difference. If that's it, that's it. Yeah, it's jerking. Okay, this is with the plate drive, and I definitely do not see the twerking here. Not at all. Let's go with the grid drive. Now I'm using the grid drive out of the 1077 and I don't see any shaking either. So before I was using the plate drive onto the plate of the horizontal out now I'm using the grid drive and I got the horizontal oscillator tube pulled out. So I'm, um, it's got to be in the oscillator circuit. Now look at it with its own oscillator. There's got to be a noisy resistor or something. Okay, this is getting interesting. I think I'm still in uh, manual focus. That right there. That line right there. That is what we're looking at right now. It's pretty good, right? But let me go to the other side of that thing. See that? Now that is looking at that junction right there between this 120 and this thing. So it's good over here. Not seeing it, but I'm seeing it in between these two. And that's really a pretty good sized jump. And that is that resistor right there. It goes, connects from here to here, through here to pin one. Let's check it on this side. There is some movement here too. On the, cause this, 
this is coming from the, the DCB plus. So there is some movement here too on the B plus. In fact, there's quite a bit. Okay, I got the horizontal output cathode disconnected, and I spray this this resistor here, this 120 one watt with uh, cold spray, and it just goes completely at me. Let me try and spray it before the camera goes dead again. I know it's going to calm down. Last time I sprayed it, it went completely nuts. I mean, it was like going off the screen. The, the swing is biggest right here. There's no swing over here. There's a little bit of swing over here. I'm going to say that thing's jacked up. Try and spray it again. I'm going to change that resistor. All right, now I got the horizontal oscillator tube out, and I got the horizontal output tube out. And look at this thing go. Look at the noise on that resistor. And that's on, that's on a tenth of a volt. Let's go up to a half a volt. And I was taking that scope reading from this point fifty right here. The noise is very minimal right here and very minimal right here. It's got to be this guy. Could it be this? Well, the path, the path would be like this. It sure seems like it would be this one. Could it be this one? See if the load was changing here, it would cause that, but it seems like then it would be minimized through here to here. Yeah. I don't know. Only one way to find out. Change this one, see if it's still doing it, and then change that one. I lifted the VDR, um, this guy right here, and I um, am still getting the pulses, but they're not as exacerbated. And, and it's, I don't think it's the resistor. I think it's the... This organization, Boko Haram, has been one of the worst regional... I think it's the voltage, the B+. plus. I'm starting to think it's a voltage. What I did is I measured the... the voltage on that VDR and then I used my decade box to substitute a value in 
The Associated Press reports two of the kidnapped girls... You can still see it's moving up and down. Twenty of them are ill. It's time now to look ahead Crap, to the what did I do? Susie said joins us with what's coming up on KCAL 9 News at 10 o'clock. Hi, Susie. Sylvia Lina, hello. Coming up at 10, a dramatic rescue on a local freeway as police say the teenager. We'll show you that video. Plus, dogs stolen then sold for quick cash. There's still fluctuation. I, I wonder what's going on with that. Although you don't see it in the picture as much without the VDR, but the VDR could be exacerbating it because it's a VDR, and that's kind of what's trying to regulate. Now I, I put the uh, decade box in place of the resistor, and I got the VDR hooked back up, and look at it go. But this could be the VDR trying to regulate. I'm not sure. It's way more stable with, with their fixed resistor versus the VDR, but it's a totally different waveform. Okay, so this is taking a look at it using the decade box. And we can see there's absolutely no twerking at all. It's a little shaky, but that could just be the line. Now I'm going to... I'll go back to the VDR. Okay, here's back to the VDR, and you can see it twerking. Not much, though. Here's looking at the scope with the VDR. Now I'm going to go with the replacement VDR. This is a VDR that I bought for my CTC-19. And this is the right part. And this is with the replacement VDR. I do not see the shaking. I mean, it's bouncing around a little bit. That could be, again, the line voltage. Oh, I take that back. So it's not the VDR and it's not the resistor, so it's something else. Look at the way this shakes with the other VDR in there though. I, I'm... And if I get rid of that VDR, it gets rid of this almost totally. It must be a function of that VDR regulating. Hmm, something's burning.